Welcome to the part 2 of 3D Modeling Basics in BricsCAD. Now here we'll start with the basics of UCS or the coordinate systems first. And for that, I'll make a box primitive. So let's first go to the view options and change it to top back left view. That looks like kind of this. And maybe not, maybe this view top front left and now I'll make a box primitive so I'll click on two points here and add a height let's change the visual style as well so right click here visual style and modeling now if you want to make your drawing on any plane here then well you know the first thing you've got to change your plane to any plane for example to this left plane then go to UCS and select current view and now you can make your drawing on this view pretty easily but if you don't want to change your view and then set the UCS then you can use this option but before I do that let me change my UCS back to the default by clicking this align UCS to world all right now we are back to defaults now if for a moment let's assume that we want to make something on this plane exactly here now for that you can go to this next option on the coordinates panel which is align UCS to face now select a face on which you want to make things in this case this face and the UCS will align now press enter and we are done UCS is now aligned to this face and if I make anything now it will be made exactly on this plane even if I make it somewhere here it will be added on this plane if you just orbit your drawing look at this it's exactly on this plane so that's how you can change your planes simply by selecting align UCS to face option. Now if you don't want to do this all together and if you have existing geometries and if you directly want to start modeling on it then we have another option as well. So once again I'll click on this align UCS to world option to return everything back to normal and then I'll activate this option called DUCS in my case the dynamic UCS is already on but if it's not then select it and activate it if you don't see that option click this arrow and select dynamic UCS make sure this is checked when it is checked it will show up here and then you can click on DUCS to activate it now with that option active if you select any draw command and move your cursor close to any plane the plane will highlight not only that if you move it on that plane the x y axis will become parallel to that plane for example in this case as you can see this plane is highlighted so the x y axis will become parallel to this plane if I however move to this well now x y is parallel to this plane and here it is parallel to this one so in this way you can simply start making things simply by moving to the plane and then start making your geometry now this is good if you only want to make things using reference of existing geometries because it, this is not going to work for empty areas here if I make anything it will be made exactly on the XY plane and in this case you know the tools that you need you can use this align UCS to face for a face or you can just orbit your drawing and select UCS and select current view so with that I'll just delete this and I'll also delete all of these things and now let's talk about the push pull tool now for the push pull tool once again we'll make a solid primitive so I'll just quickly make one again this box and how about we make a circle as well so I'll go to the circle tool and with the dynamic UCS active I'll go to this plane and right here I'll make it so oops it's a bit larger so I'm gonna have to decrease its radius I'm just going to use these grips to make it smaller there we have it now the push pull tool is right here on the modeling panel and using this you can increase the height or width of any 3d object and you can do that simply by pushing or pulling the existing faces so in this case I'll select this face and enter and now you can see that I can increase the height simply by moving it along the side or I can simply dial in a number so in this case I'll simply eyeball it and I'll click here there we have it now the face has been extruded not only that you can also push 
pull these kind of geometries but to do that you need to first convert it into face en entities right now it's a 2d geometry so it's not a face in order to convert this into a face I need to go to this option called imprint and now I'll select this 3d object so you've got to start with that select and now select this sketch which you want to imprint and press enter and we are done now I'll press escape and you'll notice that this has now a peculiar boundary here because it has been now imprinted here and it will work like a face so I'll go to this push pull and I'll click inside and now it's highlighted I'll press enter and once again you can add a height here or you can just cut it so in this case I'll move it all the way through this solid and it will make a clean cut kind of like this so in this way you can use push pull to cut the geometries now the next interesting tool here is fillet and chamfer now obviously you may need to add fillets and chamfers quite a lot and we have the tools right here so this one is fillet select it and now select an edge on which you want to apply this so I want to apply it here so I'll select that and I'll press enter now you've got to specify the fillet radius and you can do that in a dynamic way simply by moving your cursor or you can also dial in a number as always so in this case I'll maybe use a fillet value of 0.2 and I'll just press enter and here we have this tiny fillet added here you can also add the chamfers in a similar way so we have chamfer and once again select an edge so I'll select this edge here I'll press enter and now we have chamfers here so as you can see again in a dynamic way we can just move our cursor to add it or we can add a chamfer distance so how about we add a distance again so I'll type 0.3 and enter and we have this chamfered edge alright so now let's talk about sweep so I'll delete it all and for the sweep tool I'll first create some geometries so I'll go to this top plane then I'll create a very simple spline and enter all right now I'll just create a circle so I'll go to circle and maybe I'll add one here and also I'll add a rectangle right beside this also let's make a copy of this I'll select it and I'll just copy this all right now let's sweep it so with sweep you can sweep these curves on any kind of path so the sweep tool is here in the modeling panel and I'll select the sweep from here now you need to select the profile I'll start with a circular profile so I'll select it and press enter now select the path so I'll select this as spline and there it is it will just sweep that circle along the path you have selected let's see it again using these two options so I'll go to sweep I'll select the profile and enter and then I'll select the path before I do that I will select the twist option or maybe let's just select the path first there it is it will sweep it along the path now let's try the twist option so control Z sweep this object and enter the path but again the twist option so go to twist and add a twist angle I'll select a twist angle of 500 degrees and enter now I'll select this and look at this what we are getting here is a twisted sweep shape so it is just twisting it along the path by an angle of 500 degrees so by the time this object reaches the next end of the sweep path it has rotated by an angle of 500 degrees and that's the twist angle so you can make interesting shapes using this sweep tool now let's move to the loft tool and this is also one of the most interesting 3d modeling tools so I'll go to loft here and for that I have created some geometries and basically these are 2d sketches which are on parallel planes so they are all on parallel planes now I'll go to this loft option and here basically we can select the geometries and it will create shape connecting all of these so I'll select the first second third and fourth so four of these are selected I'll press enter 
and press enter again and we have this now it may not look like much because of the visual style so I'm gonna to have to change it that so I'll right click here visual style and modeling and now you can clearly see this so that's how it will loft it so it will connect every single cross section to create this kind of bottle shape let's do it again for this so I'll go to loft and I'll select the first object the second and third and it can join these kind of variable geometries as well so we have a square actually a rectangle here and then these two circles now what we are getting here is a simple loft and this lot will depend on the order of selection so what I mean is this I'll press escape and I'll go to loft again and now I'll change the order of selection so I'll select this first now this object is the second and then third object will be that one which is inside but as you can see I'm not able to select that because of visual style so I'm gonna have to change that one more time so visual style and 2d wireframe let's go to loft the first object the second and finally the third object and I'll press enter and enter again and let's change the visual style to see what we get so this is what we are getting now a completely different shape so depending on the lofting order that you've selected the shape will change now finally let's talk about the boolean tools and boolean tools can help you make composite geometries now here I have three examples which I'll use and by the way you can download all of these drawings all of these sample files from the link in the description alright so back to this now in this case I will make some final shapes using these composite geometries I'll start with the first boolean tool which is again here on the solid editing panel we have the first boolean tool right here called union so I'll select union and now I'll select these three geometries so basically this object is made with three separate solids and if I move it separately let me press escape and I'll select one of these I'll go to move I'll move it out and look at this you can clearly move it separately so I don't want that I want it all to work like a composite object for that I'll go to boolean first second third and enter that's it now they're all combined into a single unit I'll select it again I'll go to move click at a point and now it will take the entire geometry with it so that's the union boolean tool all right what's the next one next is subtract now in this case it will subtract one body from another so select subtract and then select the body that you want to keep so I want to keep this pipe so basically we have two pipes here so one inside another and I want to create a hollow pipe here so I'll select the one which is outside and enter now select the pipe which is inside so I'm gonna to have to do that very carefully because as you can see it is okay now it is selecting the pipe which is inside and now it is not so I've got to make the selection carefully there it is click and enter and there it is so it now created a hollow pipe right here it just subtracted the pipe which was inside from the one which was outside to create this composite shape finally let's see what intersect can do so intersect will basically retain the common part between two objects so I've got two extrusions here so I have one extrusion which looks like this another extrusion which is well made from this profile it has been extruded in this direction let's use intersect so intersect I'll select both of these here and I'll press enter that's it as easy as that and it will only keep the part which was common and that looks like the fan blade blade of a fan actually so that's what I have tried to make here so you can make these kind of composite shapes which is really very difficult to make otherwise using the boolean tools and these are the basic 3d solid modeling tools in BrickCAD. there are a lot more but this will serve as a foundation for you to work with all the other advanced 3d modeling tools of BrickCAD. Now if you have any question feel free to let me know in the comment area and don't forget to share this video. I'll see you soon in another one.